If you want to improve the lighting for your photo or video, but confused by all those different kinds of light modifier, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the most common light modifier in the market and how they can use to improve the lighting. Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here. One of the most important thing to improve the look of your photo or your video is the light. You need to understand light and you need to be able to use the light to help improve your photo or video. Now, there are many different ways to do that. You can just rely on natural light. But one way to allow you to consistently create good lighting is to understand how to use light modifier with artificial lights to improve the lighting. Now, there are many, many different kinds of light modifier that you can use. For example, the most common one is like an umbrella, the shoot-through umbrella, refractive umbrella, or a softbox like the one I'm using right now to light up myself. Or there are some many different ones like I have this thing here, I don't even know how what's the name of this, but it helped me to create some interesting looking lighting. So um, there are many, many different kind of light modifier that you can use. When I talk about lighting, I think a lot of people just think about the big studio light, big strobe with a big softbox. Those are absolutely fantastic. They are very powerful and they give you a lot of flexibility how you can light up a scene. But they are also very heavy, they are also big, and they are very expensive as well. So not everyone can uh, have those light to use, especially if you are a beginner. Probably I wouldn't recommend you just go out buy a $2,000 uh, studio lighting kit because they are just very expensive. And if you are shooting in a small room like this one here, you probably also don't have enough space to set up those big studio lights. So instead, you can just start with some of the smaller light. Battery powered camera flash would be very good if you are a photographer. But over the last two, three years, those small battery powered LED light and becoming more and more popular because they are easily portable and they are also very bright and they can also be used for both photo and video. So that's why in today's video, instead of using some of the big light and big light modifier, I'm just going to use this little kit here. Uh, this is the LumCube lighting kit. I don't remember the M, but it is really good because it has two little LED here and it has a range of different very common light modifier that I can use to explain and demonstrate how some of the most popular light modifier can be used to help improve the lighting. The first thing I want to talk about is color gel. So uh, color gel is basically just a colored filter here that will change the color of the light when you put it on top of your light source. Now, there are many different kind of color gel. Normally, the most common one is the orange or yellow one that can be used to warm up the color of your light. Or the other one is the opposite, which is the bluish color, which is this one. Oh, the magnet here is very strong. Okay, so this one, it is the opposite of the orange, yellowish is the bluish. So this can be used to cool down the color of your light. But there are also all different kinds kind of color gel. Uh, you may have the red one here. <laughs> it's really hard to take apart. Uh, like a red one here or use a green one or any color that you can think of, you can probably buy a color gel of that color. Why do you need to use a color gel or when do you use a color gel? To me, I think there are two main purpose of using color gel. The first one is it help you to match the light of your light source to the ambient light. For example, in this room here, I have the LED light, so um, I have a very, very white LED light source. So if you use a LED light like the Loom Cube, then it doesn't really matter because they are all white light source, so they would completely match. But if I am filming or shooting photo inside a room using the tungsten lighting, which is more orange-ish, if I mix the tungsten light with a white-ish, 
LED light, then the photo or the video would look very strange because your subject will now be light up by two different colors, so it doesn't look natural at all. So what you need to do is to apply some color gel on top of your light and that will make the color of the light to match the ambient light so your subject will look more natural. That is the first or the primary reason why you want to use a color gel that is to match your light source with the ambient light. The second reason why you may want to use the color gel is to be more creative. For example, if you apply a blue filter to your light and use it to light up your background, that will give people a much colder feeling. Or if you change the color gel to a red one and use it to light up the background, then that will give a completely opposite feeling. It will feel hot, it will just make the scene feel completely different. But of course, you can also use the color gel to change the light color and use it to light up your main subject. And that can also create some special artistic effect. And another little tip about using color gel is feel free to stack up multiple color gel on top of each other if you want to increase or create some different color that your individual color gel cannot give you. The next thing I want to talk about is how to soften up your light and this is one of the areas that I think a lot of people got some misconception about how the softbox or light modifier can use to help soften up the light. For example, I have seen many people, even uh, some professional wedding photographer, they would put a little diffuser on their speed light and point the speed light up to the sky when they are shooting outdoor and I think they are trying to soften up the light from the speed light and that definitely is the wrong thing to do. Now to soften up the light you need to understand one thing is how soft the light is is completely just depends on the size of your light source and I may even say it's the relative size of your light source and what I mean by relative size is okay for example if you have a light source that is A4 paper size like this so if you don't change the size of the light source you can still make the light softer or harder and what you need to do is if you want to make your light harder you just need to move the light further away from your subject and when you do that the relative size of the light uh, when this the, how the subject sees it becomes smaller and smaller and that would give you a harder and harder light. One example I can use is if you look at the sun, sun the sun is a gigantic light source and it's huge and in theory it should give you very soft light but because the sun is so far away from us is I don't know how far is it from us but it's so far away if you look up the sky the sun is a very tiny spot and that's why it gives you a very hard light okay so go back to the imaginary a4 light source if you want to make it softer you just need to bring it a lot closer to your subject so closer it is to the subject then the softer the light is. I know some of you will say, no way, that's not true. When I bring the light source very close to the subject, isn't that I'm going to bring out everything? Uh, that's because it does increase the intensity of the light. So what you need to do is that you can either dial down the intensity of the light or you just change some of the camera setting so that you can bring the exposure level down back to what it was before. If you have a smaller diffuser like this one, because the size of the diffuser is not really big so um, it can still help soften up the light a little bit because compared to just the light itself you can see that it is still quite a bit bigger so it can still help soften up the light a little bit especially if you are shooting indoor because now the light will scatter everywhere and that means it can also bounce off some of the light to the nearby wall or ceiling or surface and that would give you a slightly softer effect compared to you don't use any diffuser at all but for it to be most effective you do have to make sure the light source is very close to you probably within one meter or even half a meter if possible and it'll be even better if there's a wall next to you but if you put the light quite far away like more than two or three meter away then the diffuser become not really effective but if you ask me I think the biggest benefit of using a smaller 
diffuser like this one is not really to soften up the light on your subject but to help spread out the light so if you use it to light up the background it will cover a wider area and also the transition at the edge the light fall off would become a lot softer and a lot more natural Okay, so we were just talking about how we can soften up the light or spread out the light but sometimes you want to achieve the opposite effect, sometimes you want to restrict the light, the light beam to a smaller area and one of the most common way to do that is to use the barn door. So um, okay, let me put it on to the light. So um, as you can probably imagine, with the barn door you can restrict how the light go out by just um, changing the angle of each of the four barn door here you can just restrict it by closing all the barn door quite a bit like this then the light beam will be a lot more restricted in terms of the, the coverage or you can leave some of the individual doors open and just close some of the door so that you can create for example like a horizontal strip of light or like a turn it this way then you can create like a vertical strip of light for example if you want to simulate morning light that comes through a door then you can use a barn door like this and then the light pattern that comes out from the light would become like a vertical strip so yeah you can do whatever you want with the bundle to create and reshape the light while the bundle is very flexible and very useful for you to reshape your light if you want to restrict it to a smaller area bundle is probably not the best tool to do that and what you can do is that you can look at using honeycomb grips when you use the light to light up the scene, when you turn on the light, light actually would travel in all sort of direction, go to the left, go to the right, up and down. So when you put the honeycomb grip on top of the light, what it does is that it would restrict the direction of the light that can go through, come out from the light. When you are buying honeycomb grip, normally it comes in a set but with different kind of dimensions. Some of them might be a bit thicker, some may be thinner, or some of them may have the holes here, maybe bigger and might be smaller. And the reason is just the different physical dimension of this honeycomb grid will give you different kind of light pattern. So the thicker the honeycomb grid or the smaller the holes in the honeycomb grid normally means it is more restrictive because the light has to travel more like a parallel to the light source. That means the light beam that comes out from the light will be more restricted to a smaller area. So sometimes you don't want the light to be too restrictive then you may choose to use a thinner honeycomb grid or you want to use one with the bigger hole because that will still allow the light to spread out a little bit but if you want to restrict the light to a smaller area then you will choose a thicker honeycomb grid or the one with the smaller holes in it and another tip is that if you really want to restrict the um, the light beam area to a smaller, you can just stack all the honeycomb grid that you have on top of each other. If you do that, then the light beam will be much more restrictive than if you are only using one of the individual honeycomb grid. The honeycomb grid is very good at helping you to reduce the light spread out so the light is only focused in a small area. But if you really want to restrict it to a very small light area, then honeycomb grid is not enough. And what you need to use is something like this one, which is a snood. What it is, is um, basically a small opening that is quite a bit away from the light source. And that means only the light that go through this hole uh, in pretty much a parallel direction will be able to leave the light. So with the snoot attached to the light, the light beam will be a lot more restrictive and this is the tool that you should use if you really really want to limit the um, area that you want to light up. So if you want to light up a very small area, then snoot is the best tool for you to use. This can be very useful for example when you are shooting portrait, for example if you only want to light up a part of the face of your model or 
you can use it to light up the background if you only want to light up a small area to create a circular highlight in the background you could use this nook to help you achieve the effect as well okay so these are some of the most commonly used light modifier that you can use to reshape and improve the light it's really up to you to apply your creativity so that you can combine different light with different light modifier to create the lighting effect that you want thank you very much for watching this video but before you go um, I just want to know whether you like this kind of video or not it is not really a camera review but talk more about the photography side of it let me know whether you enjoy watching this video or not and if there is anything special that you want me to cover in the future video please let me know as well by dropping a comment below once again thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video